So we're here today in Lyons Research Farm for the ASA Sheep Masterclass and now I'm joined by Tommy Boland, uh, Associate Professor in Sheep Nutrition. Uh, Tommy, you were talking here I suppose today on uh, a lot of people or a lot of mid-season flocks are in, in mid-pregnancy and soon going into late pregnancy and I suppose the importance of feeding yours and, and not letting yours slip too much condition. Yeah. So I suppose, Darren, first thing I'd say, it's, it's hard to get a one size that fits all when you talk about flock management. But in general, a lot of our mid-season lamb and flocks, they're housed during late pregnancy, and we feed them grass silage predominantly, and some guys are still feed hay, but we'd be predominantly looking at feeding grass silage. And when it comes to managing the yo at this time of the year, mid-pregnancy, our yo's are going to lamb down now on the 9th of March, so we're about six, seven weeks away from that. We need to keep our eye on a few important characteristics of the flock, so we feed them correctly. We need to understand what our feed supplies are like so we can match the feed to the requirements and then supplement it with any short coming. So there'll be three or four important points I think we need to consider when you look at designing the feeding program for your yos during late pregnancy. So if you look around the shed here with us, um, the first thing you need to know is know about your yo. What size is she? Um, and a lot of us wouldn't be good at knowing what size our yos are. And what I've learned over the years is when we don't know what size her yo is, we assume she is smaller than she actually is. So we'd assume that she's maybe 70 kilos. And we put these sheep across the scales here about 10 days ago. And there wasn't two, there was as many over 80 kilos as there was under 80 kilos. If we underestimate that weight, we underfeed them for the maintenance requirement. So that will have a knock on impact in terms of how we feed them to produce lambs. The second thing then, which is really important, I believe, is knowing the litter size they're carrying and knowing when they're going to lamb. And I guess we're lucky here in the sense, or maybe not lucky, but uh, we have the advantage of synchronizing the yos, so we know within the space of three or four days when those yos are going to lamb down. If it was a case, Tommy, to say you didn't know and you may be wanting rattling rams, is there any sort of rule of thumb that a farmer might be able to use? Yeah, well, listen, the more information they have, you. The more information you have the better but the reality is that not all farmers will rattle and not, not all farmers will know exactly when they're lambing. If you at least know the date the ram went out with the yos, the vast majority of the flock will lamb within three weeks or will go and lamb within three weeks of the ram going out. You know so at least it narrows it down to, to, to 15 to 21 days there. And say from that period in you're yours here they're in good condition you're keen to tell I suppose the people attending here today that that's that's a big asset and it's worth a lot to UCD but it should be worth a lot to farmers. Absolutely so that was one of the strong messages we put across in the ASA uh, sheep masterclass today is to maintain body condition score uh, from mid-pregnancy into late pregnancy and lambing and it's after lambing that we believe there's more value in utilizing that body condition reserve at that stage for a couple of reasons um, <coughs> I suppose the, the first is during late pregnancy, we, we are supplementing the yo because our forages won't meet, their, won't meet the yo's total requirements. So what we have here in this first bucket, that's just <coughs> the average quantity of silage dry matter that can be consumed by a yo in late pregnancy. So this bucket here, that represents uh, approximately one kilo of silage dry matter of moderate quality silage. That's equivalent to about 10 to 11 megajoules of energy which is just about sufficient to meet the yo's own maintenance requirements. So essentially, they won't eat enough to make a contribution to growing the lamb. Uh, can a yo physically eat more than that? Say, you're saying that that's your one kilo dry matter. Can a yo compensate by eating more? A yo can eat more, but she won't be able to eat more of that average moderate quality silage. So if the yo wanted to meet her entire energy requirement from silage, she'd need to eat that quantity here, which, and that bucket represents 1.8 kilos of silage dry matter. Now, she will physically not be able to consume 1.8 kilos of moderate quality, 66, 67% DMD silage. She just won't be able to do it. If we can push that silage up to 80, 81% DMD, maybe 15, 60% protein, we'd be very happy that that's sufficient to feed a single bearing yo. Um, our twins will, will still need some level of concentrate supplementation at that silage quality. So generally what you're after showing there, your 66 to 70 DMD, it's your normal sort of benchmark that we're working on most years. 
uh, sort of your raisin sca scale from 0 0.1 kilo up to nearly a kilo before yeah. lambing. If there was a farmer, I suppose, lucky enough, and this year there isn't too many that had uh, supply of grass, what are you talking about in grass to keep her going at the moment? Well, at the moment, she's probably requiring somewhere between 1.4, 1.5 kilos of grass dry matter. Um, grass at this time of the year, while it's great to have it, it doesn't have the same feeding value as grass in early spring wood, um, particularly if it hasn't been grazed. Because the, the dry matter, sorry, the dry matter digestibility, the energy content in that grass is lower than what you'd see in spring grass. Um, so to consume 1.3 or 1.4 or 1.5 kilos of grass dry matter, that's the volume that's represented in this bucket here. Um, today, that grass might be 13% dry matter, maybe down to 12. And beside that, we see the volume of water that's contained in a quantity of grass to supply 1.5 kilos of dry matter. So it's going to be very hard physically for the O to, to take that volume in. It, it's achievable, it's achievable, but if there is grass available on farms now, uh, I believe that grasses are more value once that yo lambs down. And I suppose that's where we're moving on and you've, you've very good visuals here in this. Say, when a yo lambs down, obviously we can feed them indoors, but it's going to be very costly. We can feed them indoors when the lamb down. It is going to be costly because when that yo lambs down, you know, if you take it from the point just before lambing, say the last week of lambing, up until three weeks after lambing, when a twin yo's energy demand will peak, her energy requirement more or less doubles. You know, pretty much, it goes from about 18, 19 megajoules per day up to 33, 34, 35 megajoules per day. If she is trying to meet that 33 or 34 megajoule intake requirement from grass only, she needs to consume this volume of grass here. Okay. So this bucket, this green bucket, that represents the grass required for a yo to consume to give her that 33, 34 megajoules. Slightly over three kilos of dry matter, but it's a big pile, it's a big volume, um, because again, it contains a lot of water um, and it's quite a bulky product. So you can imagine a 75, 80 kilo yo trying to consume that volume of grass. It's a particular challenge. Um, now they will do it on, with, with, on certain days when grass dry matter is high, some of her own work here from, from recent years will show that when grass dry matter is low, her grass dry matter intake can drop by as much as 25 to 30 percent. When that happens, there are a few potential outcomes. We can feed concentrates, we can allow that yo to reduce her milk production, or that yo, if she has those body reserves, she can mobilize her body reserves to make up the deficit. And that's why I say we try to maintain the mid-pregnancy body condition to the point of lambing so that our yo has it there available on the day she lambs to mobilise over the first four or five weeks of lactation. How much, say, body reserves have a yo in good body condition score, maybe a bit sort of towards the strong end, but she lambs down around BCS 3.5. What's that worth? How much of that can she mobilise? Yeah, well, she, she could mobilise up to one full body condition score unit. Now, we'd hope they wouldn't go all together to one body condition score unit. Um, but if she was to mobilise that level of body condition score, it's actually equivalent to the energy content in 35 kilograms of barley. And that's what these two bags represent here. It's just the energy content represented as kilograms of barley, which a yo mobilises when she mobilises one full body condition score. And a body condition score in a sheep, it's about 10 to 12 kilos of live weight. So we'll say 10 kilos of live weight for a round figure, which is easy to work with. And you have three bags beside. While, while she'll give you two bags, she wants a bit back in return. She does. There's no such thing as a free lunch in this world, you know, and there is a slight inefficiency built into that process. So while she will yield our... Uh, sheep mobilizing one body condition score is equivalent to 35 kilos of barley when we turn around and try to replace that body condition score the energy required is equivalent to 45 kilos of barley so there is an inefficiency now we don't try to build that energy by feeding our barley because we'll be building that body reserve after lactation is finished as the yolk comes up to mating so we'll be doing it from grass and this pile here, which is rather substantial, um, represents the volume of grass that a yo must consume over and above her daily maintenance requirement to intake enough energy to gain a one body condition score or to gain that 10 to 12 kilos of live weight. So I suppose there's another message built into all of that then is to try and limit the fluctuations in body weight that you're not putting the yo's pressure under 
uh, you're not putting our system under undue pressure at any stage. Absolutely. So you don't want body condition score yo-yoing up and down. It will change, absolutely. It's not going to flatline right throughout the production cycle. But I suppose if we can manage that body condition score to minimise the magnitude of those changes, the system becomes more efficient. And that was one of the key findings out of our recent multi-species sward program here, the Smart Grass Project. Uh, where we saw that the yews grazing the multi-species swarms, they had a more consistent body condition score across the year. Um, and in addition to that, their lambs had a higher level of performance and those yews actually scanned with a higher litter size compared to the yews fed on perennial ryegrass only. Okay, uh, that's a very good rundown Tommy and uh, I suppose people can read more either through the ASA website uh, and can see the slides there or through Farmer's Journal this week. Absolutely.